I today I just want us to appreciate and understand the health system in Zimbabwe. We are such a huge organization of 37,000 employees in the health sector. And often people don't recognize that health is not just the central hospitals. The central hospitals in this country are six. Three in Bulawayo, three in Harare. That includes Paranyatwa Hospital, Harare Hospital, and Chitungiza Hospital here in Harare. And in Bulawayo, it's United Bulawayo Hospitals, Mpilo Hospital, and Ingucheni, which is a mental institution. Those are the six central hospitals. Then we've got provincial hospitals, and there are eight of them in each of the provinces, outside the urban provinces. Then we have got 63 district hospitals. Often people don't know how big the Minister of Health is. We've got 63 district hospitals, and we expect each one of them to be working well. And also we've got 47 mission institutions, and we also expect them to be working well. And on top of that, we've got 23 general hospitals, like Kadoma, like Kwekwe, like Rusape. They are not central hospitals, they are not provincial hospitals, they are not district hospitals, but they are, they are general hospitals. On top of that, we've got 1,211 health centers. So each district hospital is surrounded by health centers. Now we're going further to create health, village health posts. But the Ministry of Health is not just hospitals and clinics. It also includes other areas. For an example, we have got very strong regulatory authorities that look after nurses, that look after doctors, that look after dentists, and we've got seven such councils which come under my ministry. But that is not enough. We also have other semi-parastatals, like the National AIDS Council. It comes under my ministry. We've got also the National Pharmaceutical Company, which is our drug wholesaler, if you like, or warehouse. It comes under our ministry. We've got the Traditional Medical Tra Practitioners Council. That's a council that looks at traditional healers. And uh, it comes under my ministry. On top of that, we also look at the Zimbabwe National Family Planning Council. It comes under this ministry. But we've got big programs of prevention, where we try to prevent malaria by spraying. We also try very, very hard in terms of prevention to look at HIV and treatment of HIV. So we have a, a huge, huge ministry. And I must say that in spite of what you see, it's really, really doing relatively well. In spite of the shortages of funds, there's a lot of commitment from the staff a lot you will see are also frustrated because they are overworked, they are overstretched. But generally, all those institutions work. Today, we will be going to Kariba. We're going to see another institution there. We're going to see Siakov Hospital, really at the banks of the rivers. And all those institutions, we expect them to work. But you know, Mr. Tijo, what is happening is, if you come to Parinyato Hospital and you go to the casualty, there may be 30 or 40 people there in casualty. And that what gives us this image that things are not moving because you find people are crowded there. But if you went into Paranyat, into the wards, at any one time, they have over 890 patients because Paranyatwa has a capacity of 1,000. So at any one time, they have over 800 patients inside the hospital. The same as Arara Hospital. The same as Mpilo. So what you see at the window, unfortunately, always says to us that we need to improve. Because that, you should never see patients waiting for four hours to be seen by a doctor in casualty. And this is one of the things of our 100 days target that we want to look at. So it's a big, big challenge for us to improve the staff attitudes in the casualty departments, in the outpatients departments, to improve that doctors come there on time, that nurses are polite to patients, because that is their prerogative. They must be uh, polite to patients and look after the patients. So 
uh, in short, the health system is a huge organization. And not only that, yourself, you are part of the health system. Your life is just the health system. And I think that we should all prioritize health before I go into the issues of the budget uh, that is allocated to the Ministry of Health and Child Care. Um, Honorable, there is, um, we, we recently heard that there's been reductions in the prevalence rate, HIV prevalence rate. We've also seen reductions in mortality rate. Yes, you see, when you really want to see the markers of an improving health system, that's what you look at. You look at the life expectancy. We had fallen to 37 years, the life expectancy. In other words, if I look at you at about that age, it would then expect you not to live any, any longer than that. That was the life expectancy. Now it's at 59 years, still low, but it's shot up. That's a good marker. Life expectancy is no more going down, it's going up. And that's a big, big marker for any country. Number two, you look at the infant mortality rate. How many children are dying around childbirth? How many infants are dying? And again, that has come down drastic, drastically. You look at the maternal mortality rate. How many mothers are dying around childbirth? At one time, it used to be 1,100 uh, per 100,000 women who go to uh, for pregnancy uh, deliveries. It has come down to 614. It's still high for me, but it's a big drastic uh, uh, drop. And that, to me, is a marker of a health system that is improving. Number three, you are now looking at our HIV prevalence. You know, in this country, we had one of the highest prevalence rates in the region, in Africa. Now we did, we worked so hard that we actually have the highest drop of HIV prevalence in the region, to the extent that people actually come here to learn how we've done it. And you remember my mantra has always been prevention, prevention and prevention. This has been copied by the region, around us, SADAC, it has been copied by the Africa region. And now I'm being invited all over the world to talk about prevention. Uh, um, I was invited recently by the Pope to, to come to, to, to Rome to talk about prevention. And these are things that often we don't recognize here, that Zimbabwe is actually seen as a, as a beacon country in terms of fighting HIV. So we have that prevalence rate that has dropped, we have, now we don't measure just the prevalence, we now measure the incidence, how many new infections are we getting? And that is dropped as well, drastically. And we also measure how many children of pregnant mothers who are HIV positive. In other words, if a mother is HIV positive, the likelihood of them bringing out an HIV positive child is 70%. But now, because of treatment that we give, is now at 5.4%. To me, that's a big marker of an, of an improving health system. So in spite of what is said, I think we should look at all these factors, the real markers of what a health system that is improving can be doing. We've already said Harare Hospital and Pilo Hospital are not hospitals of this century. They were built for Africans uh, in 1956. That's why they've got very narrow corridors, very high windows. We have agreed as a country that we need a new Harare Hospital, for an example, because the infrastructure is not just good. It's not suitable, it's not patient friendly anymore. We need to improve the equipment in our institutions. Okay. Yeah. And we need to go high tech in our... Um, we also need to continue to train our specialists so that um, specialist services that people are seeking in India and in China and in South Africa are done here. We need to improve on that. But for the specialists to come, they need very good equipment and very good infrastructure. So the outlook in general is upgrading of infrastructure.